In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about the AC parallel circuits, their analysis method such as phasor diagram method, phasor algebra method, and the admittance method, including what is parallel resonance and the Q factor of the parallel circuits. While analyzing the AC parallel circuits, we consider them as two or more series circuits connected in parallel. For example, in the diagram shown, the two AC series circuits, RC circuit and RL circuit, are connected in the parallel. We have three methods for the analysis of the AC parallel circuits, such as phasor diagram method, the phasor algebra method, and the admittance method. Let's start with the phasor diagram method. For the circuit shown, the impedance for the series RC circuit becomes Z1 equals the square root of R1 square plus XC1 square. The current in the branch 1 equal to the total voltage supplied upon the total impedance of the branch 1 and the phase angle as tan inverse of XC1 upon R1. Thus in the phasor diagram, the current leads the voltage by angle phi. Similarly, for branch 2, the impedance Z2 equals the square root of R2 square plus XL2 square. The current in branch 2 equals V upon Z2. And the phase angle as tan inverse of XL2 upon R2. Now being inductive in nature, the current lags the voltage by an angle phi. Thus the total current I becomes the phasor sum of I1 and I2. This method is suitable for the simple <laughs> circuits if there are only two branches. But if the number of branches increases, this method becomes complex. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let's go for the phasor algebra method. In this method, we make use of the algebraic rules for the addition or the subtraction of the phases. Taking the same circuit, we represent the impedances Z1 and Z2 in the complex form and the branch currents are simply added to obtain the total current I in the circuit. Let's take an example to understand the phasor algebra method. For a circuit shown, determine the total impedance and the total current in the circuit, branch currents, the power factor of each branch and total power factor, power consumed by each branch. We have R1 equals 10 ohms, R2 equals 10 ohms, L1 equals 50 millihenries, C2 equals 100 microfarads and V equals 230 volts. We need to find the total impedance and the total current in the circuit, branch currents, power factors of each branch and the power consumed by each branch. We will use the following formulae of XL XC power factor and the power consumed. The reactance for the inductor is calculated as the XL equals 2 pi F into L which comes out to be 4.7123 ohms. Similarly, we get the reactance of the capacitor as the Xc equals 1 upon 2 pi Fc. Thus, from the diagram, we can find the impedances Z1 and Z2 as Z1 bar equals 10 plus 4.712 J ohms or 11.05 angle, 25.22 and Z2 bar equals 10 minus 31.83 J ohms or 33.36 angle minus 72.5. Now, as the two impedances are in parallel, the two impedance is calculated as the parallel combination of Z1 and Z2 which gives the value as Z equals 10.94 angle 6.25 equal 10.879 plus 1.19 J. Thus the total current is calculated as the applied voltage upon the total impedance of the circuit which gives the value of I bar equals to 21.02 angle minus 6.25 ohms equals 20.89 minus 2.28 J ohms. The branch currents are calculated as the ratio of the total voltage supplied to the respective impedance of the branch. Thus we get I1 equal to 18.33 minus 8.868 J ohms. The current I2 thus becomes the algebraic subtraction of the two phases I and I1 and gives the value as I2 equals 2.06 plus 6.588 J ohms. The formula for the power factor is cos phi. Substituting respective phase angles of branch 1 and branch 2, we get power factor for first branch as 0 0.904 and for the second branch as 0 0.299. The total power factor becomes 0 0.99.
The power consumed by each branch is calculated as P equals square of the current through that branch into the resistance as the power consumed by the capacitor or the inductor is zero. Thus P1 equals 4.3 kilowatts and P2 equals 476 watts. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The last method used for the analysis of the parallel AC circuits is the admittance method. Similar to the impedance, the admittance is also represented in the complex form as admittance equals conductance plus minus J into susceptance. We know that the admittance is the reciprocal of the impedance. Thus the admittance triangle is also drawn in exactly the opposite way to the impedance triangle. Let's study this method by considering an example. Compute the equivalent impedance ZEQ and the equivalent admittance YEQ for the circuit shown. Also calculate the total current power consumed by the circuit and the power factor. We have V equals 220 volts angle 10 degrees. Z1 equals minus 10 J ohms. Z2 equals 10 plus 7 J ohms. Z3 equals 15 J ohms and Z4 equals 15 minus 20 J ohms. We need to find the equivalent admittance, the total current, the power consumed and the power factor. The admittance is the reciprocal of the impedance. Thus Y1 equals 1 upon Z1 equals 0 0.1 J ohms. Y2 equals 1 upon Z2 equals 0 0.067 minus 0 0.046 J ohms. Y3 equals 1 upon Z3 equals minus 0 0.066 J ohms. Y4 equals 1 upon Z4 equals 0 0.024 plus 0 0.032 J ohms. Thus equivalent admittance becomes the algebraic addition of the four admittances giving the value Y equivalent equals 0 0.091 plus 0 0.02 J ohms. And the equivalent impedance becomes the reciprocal of the equivalent admittance given the value Z equivalent equals 10.48 minus 2.30 J ohms. Calculating the equivalent admittance by adding all the admittances is much simpler than calculating the equivalent impedance by calculating parallel equivalent impedances. Now the total current becomes V upon Z equals 20.50 amperes. The power consumed by the circuit is given as VI cos 5 equals 4.40 kilowatts. And the power factor is cos 5 equals 0 0.9767. Similar to the AC circuits, the parallel circuit is resonant when the power factor is unity or the voltage and the current are in phase. From the phase diagram, the resonance will only occur when the current through the capacitor equals the current through the inductor. The frequency at which resonance occurs is called as the resonant frequency. Thus we get the resonant frequency equal to 1 upon 2 pi root 1 upon LC minus R square upon L square. Similar to the Q factor of the series RLC circuit, the Q factor of the parallel RLC is given by 1 upon R into square root of L upon C. Let's have a quick review of what we've learned in this lecture. The AC parallel circuits can be analyzed by the three main methods as the phasor diagram method, the phasor algebra method and the admittance method. The phasor diagram method is useful only for simple circuits. For the circuits having three or more parallel branches, the phasor diagram method increases the complexity. In the case of the phasor algebra method, the algebraic addition or the subtraction of the phases is carried out that simplifies the process. The admittance is the reciprocal of the impedance. Finding the equivalent impedance of four impedances connected in parallel by admittance method becomes much easier then solving the circuit by finding the parallel equivalent impedances. Thus for the series RLC and the parallel RLC, we can compare the different parameters like the impedance, the current at resonance, the Q factor, etc. as shown in the table.